Okay, this video is about calibrating the compass on the DJI uh, NASA flight controller series like the NASA M Lite, the V1 or the V2. Now when you calibrate the compass it's called the NASA dance because you kind of move the quadcopter around in different directions like you're dancing. So uh, this is usually done when you first set up your quadcopter and at subsequent times when you change hardware on your uh, quadcopter or maybe you move to a different location to different flying fields and you need to recalibrate the compass to the Earth's magnetic field and the hardware that's around it. So the first thing you do when you get your equipment usually is you mount the GPS compass module on your plane or your quadcopter and then you go into this which is the DJI NASA assistant and you tell it where the location of the GPS compass module is. And after you've done that, you have to calibrate it. This is not the calibration. This is just telling it the mounting position. To calibrate it, you have to go into the TX Cali button right here, which is the transmitter calibration, but it's actually also for setting up your flight modes down here. Now, to do the NASA dance, you have to flip a switch ten times on your radio, and you have to set that up so it goes between manual here and GPS mode back and forth ten times. And then you'll get a solid yellow light on, you, on your uh, power module, or what they call the, the lead module. Then you rotate the, the quadcopter 360 degrees while it's flat, and then the, the light will turn, or the lead module will turn green. And then you turn the quadcopter pointed down, with the nose pointed down, and rotate it again 360 degrees, and then the light will go out, and that's the NASA dance. So to give you an idea how you would set it up, I've got a couple of switches on my radio here already programmed to do the functions. Uh, now you might notice I have them on the left. You could also use two switches on the right if you prefer that. I just, you know, a lot of people that have the Phantom already have the switches over here on the right. So they might be more used to that. So if you go from a Phantom, say, to the NASA V1 or M Lite or something, you might want to program your switches over here. I've got mine here. So when I flip the switch, this switch here, you can see on the screen that it goes between GPS attitude mode and manual mode. So to begin the NASA dance, what you have to do is flip it ten times like that between the two, basically. And then it'll enter the, uh, the compass calibration. Now the problem with this, like I said before, is that people tend to not want to use this manual mode here and would rather have fail-safe attitude mode in GPS. That way if they get into trouble, they can basically flip into failsafe and like this, so they have failsafe and it'll return to home. So you would have failsafe attitude, which is right here, and GPS mode. Well, that's great, and if you want to leave it that way, that's fine. But what happens if you're out in the field somewhere and you change something on your quadcopter or you're at a new location? and you need to do the NASA dance. Well, now you can't do it because you need to go between manual and GPS. So in order to do it, you would have to hook your, you know, your copter back up to the computer and bring up the NASA assistant and reprogram your radio to go to the manual mode so that you could then do the NASA dance, do the switch ten times. Well, there's a way around that. I actually have a second switch here. So I have my regular switch which goes between manual attitude and GPS so I can do the 10 switches between manual and GPS or if I'm flying and I really need failsafe I can flip a second switch under here and it gives me failsafe. So now I have four modes instead of just three. And I'm going to give you a link to a video on how to do that because I don't want to get into it right here and it takes a lot of time and somebody's already done it. And that is this guy right here which is Vortex2000 and he has made a nice little video on how to set up failsafe. Now he does it on a DX8 
but you could do it on an FR Sky, you know, or any other radio you want to do it where you can set up switches. So it's not a big problem to do it on other radios. But he clearly shows how to set up that second switch addition in addition to your flight mode switches or your flight mode switch. So you'll have one flight mode switch for the three modes and then you'll also have a failsafe switch. So no matter which mode you're in, say I was over here in GPS. If I flip the failsafe switch, it goes to failsafe. Okay, say I'm in attitude. If I flip the failsafe switch, it still goes to failsafe over here on the end right here. And it says failsafe down here at the bottom. Watch when I flip it. See, now it's attitude. Now it's failsafe down here at the bottom. So no matter where you are, it'll go into failsafe. Like say I'm in manual. If I flip my failsafe switch, it'll go to failsafe. So that way you can get to failsafe from any mode with that second switch. So that's kind of handy. And it allows you to do the NASA dance anywhere you want. And believe me, it's going to happen. I mean, I must have done the NASA dance a hundred times already. Like I'll go out to a flying field and decide I want to use different batteries or add a different camera or do something and I need to do the NASA dance because any hardware you change around the compass is going to affect the readings of that compass. So you need to go ahead and calibrate it again. So I think it's very important to have that second switch. Oh yes, I forgot to mention uh, when you do add the second switch to your radio you can put it anywhere you want and it doesn't use up another channel on your transmitter receiver. All it's doing is feeding some offset into the flight mode switch so that when you flip the uh, failsafe switch it adds a little offset to put the flight mode into failsafe. So you're not using another channel on your radio. It's just a mix. And you'll see that on uh, Vortex's 2000 site on that link I'll give you under the video. Uh, so to do the NASA dance, basically, you're just flipping this switch ten times right here. So it'll start out in manual, then you'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it has to be that fast, or you won't, um, you won't get it to work. If you go too slow, it won't work. So it's got to be the right cadence to get it going. And also, about, back in the mounting hardware, uh, I wanted to mention that, uh, for example, I've got my GPS on a pole and mounted on the back left side of my quadcopter. And you'll notice all of these things are negative. And it's funny about that because you'd think if it was mounted up on the pole above the quadcopter, that would be a positive value. But that is a negative value. And you can kind of see here like on the z-axis here it says red line is positive green line is negative so if you're above the aircraft on the green line it'll be negative so z will be like minus nine or minus ten if it's on that little pole I just wanted to mention that the others are pretty obvious one more thing the arrow on your uh, GPS should be pointed forward towards the nose of your quadcopter but it may be offset according to the declination in your area. Uh, let's take a look at that. So to find out uh, how much your compass is uh, going to be offset from uh, true north, magnetic north, uh, you can find out by going to this site here which is called uh, magnetic-declination.com. Go there and enter your location and it will tell you what your declination will be. Like for my area it's about minus 8 to minus 9 degrees right here. So I would just turn the compass a little bit uh, to the left about 9 degrees to compensate for that uh, declination. Okay, now let's get into actually how to do the NASA dance. Okay, turn on the radio. Then plug in the quadcopter, wait for the light to go through its sequence, and it should start blinking in GPS mode. Right now we flip this ten times, should start with manual. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. There we go. Now, flipping it around, doing it a little faster this time, just going around clockwise, and you'll see the light go back to green. Now we have green. All right, now we tip it up on its end, like this, and do a 360. And there it is. And then we can unplug it. Okay, here's another way to do it. Let's go ahead and have this switch in manual mode. Flipping on the radio. Make sure we have the right model. Plug in the quadcopter. Let the light go through its sequences. Okay, now I'm picking the quadcopter up. There probably won't be much light added, you know, no light activity because we're in manual mode down here. Right here. Okay, I'm going to flip the switch ten times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's the yellow light, and I just flipped it back into manual mode. So if you want to call it eleven, that's fine. All right, now let's go ahead and rotate the quadcopter around me. Coming around, light goes from yellow to green right there. Okay, now we flip the quadcopter so the front end is facing down like this. And go ahead and rotate again 360 clockwise. Going around. And right in here, the light goes out, and that means you're done. And since we're in manual mode, there's no blinking afterward. If we were in GPS mode, we would have it blinking GPS mode. So that's all there is to it. The calibration is done. Go ahead and unplug the quadcopter. Turn off the radio. That's it. Thank you for watching.